What is up everyone? Crunchy Frog here, and we are nearing the release of Modern Warfare 3 now here coming up on November 10th, which means that Modern Warfare 2 has been out for an, a complete year. As a matter of fact, as the time of this recording is actually two days past the uh, one year mark that Modern Warfare 2 has been put out, and around this time last year, after a week or two of playing, I put out my first impressions or a review of the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer side of things. As a matter of fact, it is my by far <laughs> my most viewed video, almost 5,000 views, uh, kind of really took off, really brought my channel up to a decent spot way back then. So I figured I wanted to revisit this one year later, um, go over some of my talking points that I had, basically just going to pull up my script from that review, talk about everything, um, you know, if stuff changed, if stuff got better, and basically kind of redo the review more or less, a little more informal, a little more discussion based as opposed to a hardcore review with a hardcore script and everything. Like I said, just going to read off my old one and kind of talk about what changed. Did anything get better? Did anything get worse? And, uh, you know, after playing the game for a full year, if maybe my opinion on some of this stuff changed. So as always, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you're psyched for Modern Warfare 3, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I try to do these COD discussion videos at least once a week, maybe once every other week, stuff like that, especially as the new game comes out and we're kind of fully in the throes of the new news cycle uh, for the new game. So definitely stick around for more videos like this. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So the first thing that we talked about and kind of covered in our uh, in my review last year rather was the pros right the things I really enjoyed about the game after having played for a couple weeks and the first thing that I mentioned is that I was having a lot of fun with this game and I think overall over the course of the year I still gotta say that I had a lot of fun I remember obviously nowadays maybe not having as much fun as some of the shine has come off the game um, so to speak after playing it so long and after skill based matchmaking has really just uh, completely eroded my patience really with the game but overall I still think I had a lot of fun and I made a lot of great memories with this game over the past year obviously there's not much need to play it going forward because of some of the carryovers into Modern Warfare 3 but uh, I definitely look upon it fondly still so I had a lot of fun in the beginning of the game and while it still tapered off I still think I had overall a very fun time as much as that skill based matchmaking would let me have you know the first point that I brought up is that the gunplay feels satisfying and that still holds true for today I've been grinding uh, gold camo again the last couple of days just uh, for the double XP weekend and yeah it still holds true gunplay still feels absolutely amazing the hit marker sounds everything like that and uh, that's one of the biggest core experiences to making a Call of Duty or any shooter game fun is that the guns feel fun and it feels rewarding to get a kill. And that is all still very much true. Obviously, that's something COD does very well. They've been doing it for 15, 16, 20 years now, whatever it is. Um, and so they finally tuned that over the years and it's still great. Obviously, that can't really change over the course of the year, but um, you know, definitely still something that uh, holds true to this day. The next thing was that I highly praised the new platform system. When it came out, it was just really a breath of fresh air. And I know a lot of people didn't necessarily hold the same views. They didn't like some of the, the unlock paths and stuff like that. But I really enjoyed it. And I got to say, looking back on it now, after pretty much everything's been unlocked, right? So I'm kind of out of that, that zone of things. But while I was in the thick of it, you know, leveling up in that beginning, it just made the beginning of the Call of Duty year so much more fun and much more unique and interesting and held my attention a lot. And, you know, obviously, like I said, nowadays, there's not really much to, to unlock. You get a new weapon from the Battle Pass and you kind of just go on shipment <laughs> and, and burn some double weapon XP and then you'll get it. But in it really shines in that beginning when you're just starting out and you're using the M4 to unlock this gun and then you use that. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was unique. A lot of people hated it, but it got me using new and unique weapons that I wouldn't have otherwise. And I just look back on it very fondly. Now, the one thing I will say, obviously, with skill-based lobbies and stuff like that, using some of those quote-unquote bad weapons or weapons that weren't meta or weapons that didn't fit your play style was kind of rough. But I think that added to the experience. I just remember that the first couple of months that this game was out, just really enjoying going through, unlocking all the guns, and kind of to tie into that, uh, the camo system that kind of came along with it, I still love it. 
Now, uh, in the review, I did say, and I quote, the new camo system may turn out to be too easy depending on how many guns are finished within the first six or seven months of this life cycle. But overall, I found it much less frustrating and more rewarding than the last three years of COD. And I still very much so stand by that statement. It turned out to be not too easy. As a matter of fact, I still don't have the completionist camo. Um, I think as of right now, as a recording of this video, I have 50 guns gold which means one more gun and I can start the platinum grind. I think I have 12 guns platinum. Um, but the one thing I did want to add, and we'll talk about this maybe later, is obviously the long shots are kind of annoying. So I might touch on that later, but I did want to mention it now. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed the camo system. I think it, it worked really well. And with how many guns they added to the game, uh, you kept being able to do that grind and you got even more cool camos. Each gun came with four new camos. And that's awesome. <laughs> so I don't think it was too easy, especially for how much me, who plays slightly more than a typical casual player would play, um, it, it was like the right amount. I have one friend that got Orion camo, and um, that's about it. But, you know, I, I felt like it was much more rewarding, much more simpler and to the point. And you felt like you could get your favorite gun gold without too much problem. And if you wanted to go for Orion, it wasn't the end of the world. So... Um, still really happy with the camo system, and I hope they carry that forward uh, into Modern Warfare 3. Uh, the next point that I had was the graphics looked amazing. And, you know, I, I, that still holds true. I still think they look great. I like the lighting engine. I know a lot of people call some of the maps drab or, you know, they all have the same color palette. I, I don't necessarily see that as much. I, it's just me. I enjoy the Modern Warfare games. I enjoy their tone and you know, stuff like that. So I still really enjoy the graphics. I think they look great. As a matter of fact, even in the Modern Warfare 3 beta, I felt like some things took a step backwards. So <laughs> as of this time, obviously the full release could be different, but at this time, I still think Modern Warfare 2 uh, has the best graphics for at least another year until Treyarch games come out. So uh, yeah, I think they completely nailed that and the new engine looks and plays beautifully. Uh, next up was Maps. Um, I did really enjoy the maps on launch. Now, obviously, I, I did go on to say that I'll touch on the not-so-pretty side of the maps, some of the maps I didn't enjoy, but I really enjoyed some of the launch maps, and I think some of the DLC maps that they did, just to kind of add on to this point, I think they did a real good job with how many DLC maps they added later on. Now, they started out kind of rocky. I think I put out a video or two complaining about that. Uh, they really prioritized Warzone at first, but at the end of the season here now, just playing through pubs a couple of times uh, that cycles through like the normal map rotation, uh, I noticed how many cool maps there were. And I don't know how many are going to go down of like, you know, when I'm 45 years old, looking back fondly on, on the, the maps in this, there will probably be maybe one or two, but definitely a lot of solid ones. And I think they, they tried to maybe use a little too much of the war zone maps um, for some of them. But overall, I think there's a lot of unique maps. And, um, you know, only a couple that really stood out to me as being horrible. So that, that's a huge plus. <laughs> Even if none of them are, are genre defining, it, as long as none of them are horrific or ones that I really want to skip, I consider that a win in my book. So that was kind of a lot of the pros that I talked about. Just the general gist of I was having a lot of fun with the game. And I, you know, thought a lot of the new stuff that they brought over was a great addition, including the gunplay. And yeah, I mean, looking back on it now, I still think overall the, the game is a plus for me. And we'll go into the cons here shortly, and I might bring up some that I missed. Um, in terms of pros that I may have missed while, uh, while I was, you know, at the very beginning, um, I would just say kind of a lot of the seasonal content, they, they did a real good job of supporting this game, I will say. Now, they didn't listen to some of the community feedback, but I think overall the game was supported very well. Now, you know, we'll get into the cons of maybe some of the skins and deals and stuff like that that, that came about. But I think overall the game was supported very well in terms of uh, a amount of content. And I still really had a great time. Honestly, if it wasn't for skill-based matchmaking, I think this could be in one of my top five, top, you know, whatever of COD games. Uh, I really think it was that good. And I have a lot of good memories with it. Um and stuff like that. Again, we're just talking about the multiplayer right now, so no Warzone, no DMZ talk or anything. But, you know, overall, I think the game was, was still really good, even a year out. 
Um, the cons, obviously, this game is is far from perfect, and and I even state in my original script, you know, it, it was far from it in its current state. So, um, you know, one of the the first things that I had experienced was the crashes galore, and and, and I gotta say that that has been pretty much entirely fixed. I don't think my game client has crashed in months maybe even like since a month or two after release but obviously making this review originally right after the game released i mean i was crashing constantly there was a lot of known bugs especially with playing with a squad i remember it like you couldn't <laughs> we ran into so many issues trying to play with each other um you know hard close to the dashboard um you know, we had a, a friend that owned the PC uh, version of the game instead of Xbox. His crashed constantly, um, you know, and, and just it, it ran horrifically on launch. But a lot of that's obviously fixed, and we hope it would be, right? A year out, you kind of hope that a lot of those are fixed and the game is running as intended, and you can start breaking down the game on more of a content and design you know, uh, kind of way of thinking as opposed to just, hey, is my game running? After 365 days, you hope the game running. <laughs> you hope the game is running, and definitely it is. The next swap, kind of in the same vein, um, I talked about how many glitches I had. Uh, for example, one of the biggest ones, and this really, really made us angry for at least two or three weeks, maybe even longer, uh, when in a party, it used to revert us to a weird Modern Warfare 2.0 screen, uh, Warzone 2.0 screen, rather, uh, after each match, and you couldn't edit your classes. It would just show you your random pre-made classes uh, that were, I guess, going to be shown in Warzone going forward. And then there was like an option saying you needed to purchase something for five grand. Um, at the time, I theorized that that probably would have to do with DMZ that hadn't been released yet. Um, and the only way to get out of that was to back out of the pre-lobby screen and uh, kind of go back in and search again for a match. And then after that match, it would go back to score one. And I remember that glitch specifically being... Probably one of the most frustrating things in gaming for a few years. Like it was experience ruining at times, especially trying to play with friends. Which in the first couple of weeks, that's all we did. We, you know, constant like three, four, five man lobbies um, with all of our friends. So we ran into this issue a lot, and obviously that's been fixed. That was fixed maybe a month or so after release. And um, there's also various UI glitches and issues. Um, that you know sometimes even required you to full on dashboard or restart your console to fix others just kind of went away on their own again most of that if not all of that is gone the game is streamlined the game has had essentially a year of uh qa testing with you know millions of players so much more smooth and the matchmaking issues and glitches i haven't really ran into either besides skill based sometimes making it uh take forever to find a match but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, the next up, uh, it was missing a lot of core elements on release. And I don't know if you guys remember that, but stuff like hardcore mode, um, challenges uh, to get like calling cards, um, the camo unlock notifications were all bugged out in game, calling card and emblems that can actually be unlocked as opposed to like the first generic 25 or whatever they give you with a bunch of flags and uh, you know, basic stuff like characters from the campaign, stuff like that. Um, the ping and weapon tuning systems were taken out day one uh, after they, they caused a lot of bugs. There was no leaderboards, no stats or barracks, um, and, uh, and no operator unlocks or leveling from COD Vanguard. So honestly, everything in that list that I, I listed has been fixed, right? We got a tier one mode, which was kind of like a... Uh, <laughs> a trash version of hardcore that eventually got replaced by actual hardcore. Um, so that's great. I, I don't really play that other than for long shots, which, you know, we'll get to, but, um, you know, that's, that's been replaced. So that's awesome. Uh, they have included challenges now and that's kind of fixed. The other thing that I mentioned about calling cards and emblems, um, they've fixed the camo unlock notifications actually a couple times. They've retold what that user interface looks like, that UI uh, as it pops up on screen. So that's in a great place. I'm happy about that. Um, the ping and weapon tuning systems, um, obviously they came back to the game once that glitch got fixed. I haven't really used weapon tuning system a, a single time, to be honest with you. So, <laughs> uh, you know, you can kind of take that or leave that, but um, I haven't used it. I do use ping all the time, obviously. Um, 
you know, in matches where I'm trying. So that's good to see that back. Uh, I do believe there are leaderboards back. I haven't checked them. I do know that they have added the stats and barracks and everything like that. So a lot of the stuff that was missing, there was like core COD functionalities and stuff like that. Like it, it's there now. So the game's complete. And, and it did take a couple weeks or even a couple months in some instances to get there. But as it stands now in October, early November of 2023, all of that's there. So, you know, a lot of the points that I kind of took off, so to speak, imaginary points uh, during this review, I would have to give them all back because the game is full. Um, a lot of the features are back and, and everything like that. So that that's awesome. I'm really happy to report that that section of my review could almost be entirely deleted now, um, you know, from my list here. Really, uh, so far, all of the cons that I've covered can pretty much be erased, which is awesome. That's what you hope for, right? Uh, next up is maps. The fact that there was only 10 at launch and a couple of them were just chunks taken out of the ground war invasion maps. Um, and I don't know the exact count. I could probably look up the exact count, but I'm a little lazy. Uh, but I know that it's, it's probably well over 20, if not maybe close to 30 now, maps that we have in the game. I think, like I talked about earlier, I think that's fully fledged out now after six seasons of content. The first season or two were a little bit rough, but then after that they started giving us like three um, 6v6 maps every single season, so that's awesome. That really fills out uh, the offering. Again, I am still mad, and I even talked about it here a couple minutes ago, that um, I mean, I'm mad that they kept bringing so many Ground War Invasion maps. To me, that's like easy cannon fodder, right? That That's like, well, we need something to put in the game. We might as well just, you know, take off this section of Almazra or, you know, Vondel or any of the... Um, DMZ slash Warzone maps and make them into a multiplayer map, right? That that's you know the quick and easy one uh, solution, and I think that they use that a little too often. <laughs> um, I think they're they're nice filler content, but I think we also need a lot more genuinely new um, or at least re remastered slash reimagined maps um, to come back. So that is kind of still a sticking point to me. But at the very least, there's not only ten maps at launch, and I also remember to kind of go along with that. Um, some of the maps weren't there that were supposed to be theirs uh, because of various exploits. All those have returned, like Museum. Uh, I think the Hotel map was another one that they had to take out originally. That's all back now. So any maps that they took out <laughs> and hid from us, they are all back on top of six seasons worth of content uh, of maps, including um, you know gunfights, stuff like that. So it's fully fledged out now, and uh, I can't say that that's too much of a problem anymore. I did say that some of them are downright awful. Uh, special consideration to the border crossing map, which, yes, uh, obviously everyone still hates that map. There's like the occasional weirdo that loves it. I don't know what's wrong with those people, but I personally cannot stand it. Um, and I even said in this review that it's one of the worst maps I've ever played in Call of Duty. And I stand by that. I, I absolutely hate it. I like that they made it so the cars don't explode anymore. They did try to fix the map in that regard. But man, it's just still terrible. It was an experiment. Uh, the experiment failed. So, you know, hopefully they never do it again. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot of the maps other than that one are, are really especially terrible standing out in my mind after having played it for a year. Um, you know, some of them are mid, they're just forgettable. Other ones are fun and I enjoy. But I don't think besides the border crossing map, any really stand out is like ones where I intentionally try to back out or like I roll my eyes whenever I see it on, um, you know, coming up on the loading screen. So that's at least good. <laughs> um, there's also a lot of random hallways uh, to get killed from. I think I've just gotten used to it now. That's how Call of Duty is. There's a lot of randomness. Um, there's not as good flow as there was in the past games. And, um, you know, that's been talked to death throughout YouTube and, and Twitter and stuff like that. But I think I've just gotten used to it. So it's still kind of a sticking point because it's annoying to just, you know, you can't check all of your lines of sight because there's a million of them and it's kind of Swiss cheese maps at, at certain points. But that's kind of what they're going for now, right? They want that randomness effect so that it's, you know, anyone has a chance to kill anyone. They, they want to cater to those ca the new players um, or extreme casual players that might not be too good at the game. And that's one way to do it, right? They're not going to know about map control or map flow or anything like that. They're just going to hope that somehow they can flank people because... You know, they're looking out a window that the other person would never otherwise look at, and they get a free kill, stuff like that. They're going to keep designing maps like this. I don't see this going away. It's still a gripe, but I think at this point I've just gotten used to it, or at least I don't get, you know, red hot with rage about it anymore. So 
baby steps, but this one would definitely still stay in my review for sure as a negative. Next up was the UI. Now, for those of you that don't remember or jumped into Modern Warfare 2 a little later, the UI on launch was abysmal. And it's gotten better. I will say there's been several updates along the way that have tried to fix things and sometimes have massively improved things. I can't even go through the whole list right now. Um, but I just remember writing, you know, this, uh, supposedly they brought in UI experts from Hulu to design it. And it was just super unintuitive. Um, one of the, the points I bring up is that you had to scroll through 189 camo options. Uh, and that was an actual number, by the way, that was not just me making up a number. There's 189 camo options and you had to scroll through all of them to find ones that you've unlocked to then add it to your weapons. They've since fixed that several times over. There's been a couple new overhauls and and revamps of the weapon camo ui and same with the calling card ui so uh, of course over the course of the year they've refined it i still don't think the ui is great um there's still a lot that i would do different but there's no extreme jagged edges so to speak anymore like there's nothing sticking out to me that is so bad that you know, I have to write about it in a review or I have to jot it down in my notes uh, to talk with you guys about. I think, honestly, they've done a good job of getting it passable. Again, still not great, but miles and miles better than the state the game was in whenever I wrote this review. Um, you know, and everything like that. I, I just think, and I even wrote in this review, like the UI from the last three games was really good. I don't know why they changed it besides people complaining that it feels the same because the UI is the same, you know, that people complain about all the time. I think they should have just kept it. It was good. It was refined, made sense, a little busy at times, but nothing too egregious. And this new UI just kind of really sucks. So <laughs> uh, especially with some of the new, I, I will say, I will backtrack for a second and say some of the things they've added to the battle pass is is horrific and a lot of that boils down to i should say the ui elements revolving around the battle pass are horrific and a lot of that's kind of to guide you towards buying but it almost feels like i'm in a mobile game and i don't say like a triple a mobile game i mean like one of those really sketchy mobile games that you downloaded from like an instagram ad uh that was made by a very sketchy <laughs> developer that is clearly just there to siphon ad money from you or to make you pay 20 bucks to, you know, remove ads or get a starter pack or whatever, like a cash grabby mobile game uh, developed by some guy in his basement. Like so many of the battle pass UI experiences and menus you have to click through and like subtle misdirection of where buttons your brain thinks they are. So then you end up clicking on the buy battle pass because you think that's normally where a close button would be. Like stuff like that, like really manipulative, like kind of psychology based <laughs> UI elements. And it's, it's kind of really scary. Uh, most of that, again, is just um, on the Battle Pass screen itself. So that's neither here nor there. But, you know, obviously at the end of the day, it is still something that I got to bring up. Um, in talking about UI. The next thing that I mentioned in the review is the sniper marksman rifles can be really OP. At launch, they were insane. They're still pretty broken at times, but they're a lot more down to earth. Um, I don't think they're as big in the meta as they were. And, um, you know, that that's, that's, thank God. You know, obviously weapon tuning has been a thing for an entire year. And whenever you have you know, 10, 12, however many updates they've had since launch, you're going to get those really refined and it, it feels a lot more fair. There's still one or two standout guns here and there, but nothing near as bad as sniper and marksman rifles have been at times. So I wanted to kind of give my conclusion. Obviously, I'm not going to go uh, off of the original review script for this, but I wanted to give my own review of what I think the game has been over the past year. And I got to say, I, I know I mentioned it before, but without the ridiculously tuned skill-based slash engagement optimized matchmaking, I think this game could be one of my favorites. Uh, one of the biggest gripes that I didn't have in the original one, because it, it ju the game had just started out, and we know how COD does with this, is just the microtransactions have gotten way off the rails again. And that's kind of a personal choice. I know a lot of people will say, oh, that's awesome. I can be Spawn or I can be Terminator or Snoop Dogg or Nicki Minaj or, you know, any one of these other crazy things. 
that's just not for me, especially not in a Modern Warfare game. To me, that feels more at place in the Black Ops series that kind of takes itself a little less seriously. It's a little more futuristic, maybe. Some of these skins would actually be at home in, in those, you know, kind of settings and stuff. So to me, the Modern Warfare, like, it started out very milsim. I remember even the uh, Christmas event, I remember talking about in a pre previous video where the Christmas event skin was even like pretty grounded and down to earth. It was just like a soldier that kind of looked like Santa Claus, but like a badass soldier Santa Claus. And I thought that was really cool. I thought that was like a portent of things to come. It was not. Uh, we got way off the rails, and obviously this season is like completely Halloween themed. So their marketing department got about seven or eight brand deals together with with different crossovers and collaborations and stuff. And it's just a nauseating at this point. Um, you know, I can't say too much. I, I do know a lot of people enjoy it, but just for me, this is a personal thing. This is not attacking the game by any means. Just for me personally, I hate it. And I wish that there was a way for me to turn off everyone's skins so we can all just be, you know, Joe Soldier Man or Stacy Soldier Woman and they'd be done with it. You know, that that's the end of it. Um, but, you know, hey, that's neither here nor there. And But that was something that I wanted to cover that wasn't originally in this review. Um, but on the flip side of that, uh, there has been a lot of cool events and cool ways to unlock new things during these events, like the haunting event, collecting souls, and, you know, some of the other ones where you had to do a bunch of camo challenges to get then a reactive camo at the end of it. Like, they did a really good job with the events, I feel like. And again, that's not something I could have you know, possibly uh, predicted whenever this this script got written originally for the review, but something I wanted to mention here after a year of playing. Um, so, you know, that that's something that I feel they did very well. And I know that's really just to bring people back so they spend money, but at the end of the day, it's still fun for the end user. So kind of a, a mutualistic <laughs> relationship there. Um, but yeah, I really feel that they were cash grabby as always. Um, you know, uh, over the year, it, it kind of got worse and worse. But at the end of the day, the gameplay was still fun, right? So, you know, I can have all my issues with the matchmaking system. I can have all my issues with the gross monetization that this franchise has just been circling the drain for worse and worse every year. But I still had fun with it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I still had fun with it. And I know I put out a lot of videos here and there critiquing certain things and praising other things. But really, I just, if I had to sum up for you guys, like, I enjoyed my time with Modern Warfare 2. And to be completely honest with you, I wish it didn't have to end. Um, you know, I like their previous strategy, or I guess the leaked strategy that ended up not coming to fruition, of making this game a two-year game, right? Releasing these, these Modern Warfare 2 remastered maps as just like a glorified DLC, and not as a full price game that's going to you know rip you out. Like I want this game to keep expanding. I want this game to get all the maps it has now and the 16 that are coming. You know, and add in all the new weapons that they want to add but without having to rebalance and all this stuff. Like I just want it to be a smooth streamlined experience instead of them kind of jamming different Lego pieces together like they started doing with Warzone 1. Right, and we saw how that turned out, but it feels very much so like this Modern Warfare 3 that's about to come down the tubes is going to kind of feed into that experience, right? Too many cooks in the kitchen type of thing, and uh, you know, a couple conflicting design decisions, stuff like that. I just wish that they carried this out for another year. I'm having fun, even you know, at the end of October, one year out, I'm still camo grinding. Uh, I still occasionally play, you know, through the quick, uh, what is it called, quick match um, system. So basically, just pub lobbies <laughs> for lack of a better term like i still enjoy hopping on a couple times a week and just having fun in cod as much as skill base will let me again that's another video entirely um you can check my channel for that just put out an hour-long video talking about that so i won't delve into that here but um yeah i am glad to see though that a lot of the problems that i had with this game uh one year ago have been solved and I didn't give this, uh, obviously, a score. I never really give scores for a lot of my reviews, especially like an early, you know, first impressions um, video like this was. So uh, I don't have a score to correct or add points or take points away. But I think a lot of the negative things that I was experiencing at the beginning of this game have been fixed. And that's incredible. And I'm so happy to tell you guys that the only bad thing is there's no point in playing it now. Right, because Modern Warfare 3 is coming down the line, and that's where everyone's going to be playing. And with this game kind of 
you know, integrating into Modern Warfare 3, there's even less of a reason to come back and play this game than there has been in years previously. COD is moving towards a, like, their entire franchise is just now one gigantic games as a service. So, you know, whereas in past years you're like, oh, I really like this game, I'm going to keep playing this game, and I'm going to come back to this game for years to come, there's really less and less and less reason or even ability to do so now. So it kind of sucks that so much has been ironed out and has been fixed and has been honed and they've listened to us on so many things. I could probably list a bunch of fixes that they've done um, and make this an exhaustive list, but now it's all over. <laughs> In two weeks, we're going to be playing the new one and... Uh, yeah, so that's kind of rough. But I just want to sit down and give my thoughts, kind of re-examine the review, as it were, one year out and see if this game is any better or any worse off than whenever it released back in October 28th of 2022. So with that, guys, I'll end it here. It's gone a little bit longer than I had hoped. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure to leave a like and let me know in the comment section below if you stuck around this long. Let me know, did you enjoy the game? What were your thoughts over the last 12 months? And will you begin? Getting Modern Warfare 3. So once again, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Until next time, catch you later.